part of it that's very <coughs> market based in the plan. Now, how can you give everybody health care and save money? Part of the impetus for doing this is that what they really are concerned about at a national level is that if health care costs just continue to escalate like they have been, um, and obviously, I believe a large part of that has to do with the profit, and a large part of that has to do with administrative overhead. Um, a large part of it is innovation in our rules around patents and things. Um, one of the things that unfortunately did happen with national reform is that the biopharmaceutical market is going to have a 12-year patent on their drugs. Biopharmaceuticals are probably one of the fastest growing new innovative areas in medicine. That's where things like the treatment for hepatitis C, the treatment for rheumatoid arthritis come from. They're injectable medications and stuff. And my sister has rheumatoid arthritis, and her medication, she has Kaiser, um, costs $1,200 a month, and she pays $400 of that out of pocket. So, um, so those kinds of costs, as a state, we would then be able to negotiate our price as an entire state. So we'd have a big market share, we'd be a big insurer, we'd be able to get good prices for our state. But, um, but because of those costs and innovations, the cost of medical care is going up every year. I think we can work on that in two ways. One is, of course, to have market power and negotiate a good price. But the second way is to look at how can you deliver health care as opposed to disease care. What costs so much in America is caring for sickness and disease. And um, many times, the things we do as a society contribute to us having sickness and disease. If you've at all looked at the newspaper or listened to the radio, we, you know that our rate of obesity continues to increase. In fact, there's a beautiful slide, show, not beautiful, scary, on the CDC website where it shows you like a color picture of the US and how many are obese over you know five or 10 years. And you see it go from being pale with not many people to being almost all dark, everybody being obese. I mean, it's really incredible what's happening in our society. But, um, but right now, things that might pay for changing policies and stuff around that are not part of the healthcare field. When you have everybody in the same risk pool and these costs are going to be everybody's costs, there suddenly become incentives for doing those kinds of preventive things because you know you're going to have to absorb the cost eventually. So let's look at doing something about it up front. Does that mean that we no longer give corn subsidies? Does that mean that we um, give you know breaks on people who purchase fruits and vegetables, but not people who purchase fast food. You know, other things like that that are policy decisions that you can as a society make when your focus is on health. But even more than that, the, the center of this model of health care is that everybody, uh, ideally, by choice, will be part of a patient-centered medical home. And the person who's your care provider could be a doctor, it could be a nurse practitioner. Um, it, it's up to you who you choose. And that person basically is assigned your life, and they become responsible for working with you to keep yourself as healthy as possible. And they're given incentives to be sure that everybody who they're, they're managing gets all the essential care that they need. And sometimes that means that you give it to them in their workplace, that you give it to children in the schools, that you go to people's homes. You just do things in a whole different way where your focus is on keeping people healthy and working and, um, and getting the care they need at the least amount of inconvenience to them. I think a lot of times we don't take care of ourselves, not because we don't want to, but frankly, can you schedule a date in four weeks when you know you'll be able to go to the dentist? You know, most of us can't, unfortunately. But um, things like that. So there'll be incentives in the system to make it easier for people to access care and to track and see who's getting what care from what system and how is that system doing at managing, um, helping people manage their health versus another system. There's a great article this month, um, I guess this last month already, it's the January 27th New Yorker magazine. And it's called The Hot Spotters. Atul Gawande is a surgeon out of Boston who writes for the New Yorker. He wrote the article a few years ago called The Cost Conundrum that discussed how it was that in Grand Junction, Medicare costs were a fraction of what they were in McAllen, Texas, um, and yet outcomes were better in Grand Junction. And, um, and so this article, The Hot Spotters, talks about this concept of having people and doing what we call population health or having people in medical homes where you're looking at their health and helping them manage their health in, is, in as unobtrusive a way as possible. Um, 
And in Denmark, when they went to this model, they went from having 150 hospitals to having 90. And they're looking at going down to 75 now because they put the incentives on keeping people healthy instead of paying people only when they get sick. Because unfortunately, whatever you pay for is what you get. Sort of like CSEP, whatever you test is what people will be test teaching, you know? So you have to be careful what you pick to pay for um, and how you incentivize that. But um, but the hotspotter also talks about how if you get a team together to manage a sick person's health, you can dramatically cut the cost of their health care. For example, um, and Kaiser actually did this around because Kaiser you pay nurses and other people to help people manage their care. Kaiser did this around hospital discharges. When somebody left the hospital, somebody called them within twelve hours to be sure they had all their medicines, to be sure they knew what they were supposed to do, to be sure they knew when they were supposed to come back to the doctor. And they decreased costs and hospitalizations dramatically. So that's the kind of health care system we'd like to try and have, is where everybody is rewarded by keeping everybody healthy instead of being rewarded when people are sick. Um, so that's sort of the basic description of what I envision our healthcare system being. Let's take it back now to what the bill does. Those of you who've been following Colorado know that if you um, want to have something where everybody has to do anything, pretty much it's a vote of the people. 